Hi, in this video, I am doing collaboration with Jane Hunter, Hello. who is a lino printmaker. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix up Colograph with lino print. Um, I'm going to use a couple of uh, plates that I have used before and I made videos on before. So if you want to go and see how I made these plates, you can jump back and watch the video. And I will let Jane explain how she made her plates. If any of you are familiar with liner printing, you can skip that bit. But if you are interested in doing liner printing, um, Jane will just give you a, a brief explanation. I think, first of all, I start by deciding what I want to do, whether it's going to be a building or a boat or an animal. Uh, for example, I've got a boat here that I did the other day. Uh, but today we thought we'd stick to fish and see things, which will go really well with the uh, background colographs. So I decide what kind of fish I want to do and then draw them onto this. This is vinyl. It's a two colour vinyl. It's much easier to cut than lino. Um, and I find that it's more durable. And then I draw the outline of the fish using a Sharpie. Uh, when I finish drawing the outline, I then take a, a, a cutting tool like this and then carefully cut round. I haven't cut right to the edge, so I'm only going to ink up in the centre where the fish are uh, because I find that if I, if I cut right to the edge, sometimes I'm getting loads of uh, the black marks around, around the side if I'm printing black. So that's basically how I do it. What we're going to do, we thought about how we're going to do it and that we think the best way to approach it is to start off with the Colograph print and then we're going to use uh, Jane's lovely linos as sort of stamps on, to on top of the Colograph. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so this is the plan. This is my plate um, and this is what uh, Jane's prints look like printed out. Uh, so we're not going to do all three fish, we're just going to, to use one. We're going to have a sort of crab in the middle here and the oyster shell around here. So, um, yeah, let's get to it. So firstly, I'm going to ink up um, my Colograph plate and I am going to do an a la pape uh, technique where I'm going to ink up various parts of the plate with different colours. I'm going to start with paints grey at the bottom which is going to turn into ultramarine marine blue and then turn into burnt amber so it'll be like a graduation of colours um, and I'm going to apply the ink with cardboard and then wipe the ink off So I just basically now I'm going to get the excess off. Scrim. Um, yeah, I actually need to get some new scrim. And then you use the whole bit or just a bit? Um, I will basically just polish the entire thing now. Right. This plate wipes quite nicely. The, it's um, been used quite a few times. You will find that the more you use the plate, the easier it will be. And how long do they last for? Well, you know what? This one is not even sealed. And 
I've done loads of prints of this one. Loads. See, I really like those two colours. Yeah. I think they work really well. They do. Um, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. yeah, they do. They look good. Yeah, that paint's grey. It's sort of a little bit bluish. Yeah, it's a nice colour. Yeah, I like that. That's a nice, it is a nice colour. So I'm going to just make sure that on the other side I have all the excess ink off so it doesn't splodge. Yeah. Because I have to, you know, press squeezes it quite hard and it's important to have the edges clean. Yeah. So again, you don't get the excess ink. So I think like I didn't do much wiping, but because I'm going to polish now. And the reason why I polish is um, just to e even expose more t textures. So and I'm what sure. do you polish with? Literally just a bit of newspaper. So if you, if you look at that. You start polishing, the more is, even more is revealed texture-wise because you're basically just doing that. So any sort of small variations, gradations in texture will come up even more. I'm seeing there's quite a bit of ink trapped here, so I'm gonna go in a bit more with a scrim. Otherwise, it will splodge. That's better. I mean, you don't have to polish, but I quite, quite like to see all my little... Well, you can see all the texture. Mm. Whereas if there was too much ink on, you wouldn't be able to see them. No. And so that's I've nice, got that ridge there. Yeah, that was done with like a tool. I've got quite a few of those. And that was, you see here, I've got some crackle paste here. Yeah. Um, yeah that's there's two types of crackle paste. One is sort of finer crackle. The other is bigger crackles. I'll show you them. Okay. Right, I think the plate is ready. to use the uh, two pieces of cardboard together. Yeah. Um, so you've drawn these in yes. so that you've, they, you, you've got the right I've size. Got, yeah. yeah, so I've drawn them on top of yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, good idea. Um, it's really handy, actually. I've started to print the wrong way round as well. <laughs> Putting If I have lots of pieces, I will do it the wrong way round, not paper on top. Because it gives me... You shouldn't do that. But it works. It, people say you shouldn't do that. They say that you should put the paper underneath? No, they say you should do paper on top. Oh, I'm yeah. doing it correctly. But if I had lots of uh, different pieces going together... Yeah. Uh, I would do it the wrong way around. And it still works. It's absolutely fine. Right, use print. I have because I have my paper really wet. I want to protect my blankets because they go stiff when they get wet. So I will use two pieces of newsprint, and then even newspaper, even like paper on top like that. Yeah, just to protect it. Don't want to get wet. But I have to go the other way around. Right. Now, because this plate is really thick, I need to be careful I don't have it too tight. Let's see. It's too much resistance. Oh, that's fine. This ends up being really hard.
So the paper is a bit bigger than the print, but it, it doesn't matter. I'm not really paranoid about borders and stuff. I just cut my print up and frame it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be really cool to see. Yeah. What, um, what happens next? Let's right. do it. So shall I ink up? Mm-hmm. And a disaster happened. Basically, as soon as Jane started imprinting her relief stamps onto my colograph, um, my camera went wrong and the recording didn't happen. I am so sorry about this. And I literally almost cried when I saw I didn't have a footage. But anyway, um, all we did is we used uh, Caligo um, safe wash inks like these and we used a Bamboo Baron like this a picture courtesy of handprinted.co.uk and all we did is I didn't even wait for the paper to dry or anything we, we, we used a wet paper and the Caligo safe wash ink uh, was rolled onto the stamp like you can see on a picture and we put my colograph print on top and Jane um, used the baron to press down the paper and that's how it happened. So not a very complicated process uh, but basically it printed really well and even despite the fact that the paper was still wet from the Colograph printout, it, it was absolutely fine. So I'm really sorry about the lack of footage and I'm totally gutted about that. Um, but anyway, this is the final result. Uh, so yes, you can do a relief print after your on top of your Colograph and it looks pretty good. So if you want to try it out, Go for it and you can mix up the two inks no problem at all um so yeah there's a lot more playground to play with um and uh, you don't have to limit yourself to one printmaking technique i hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching